everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, July 7th. Courtney's got her phone. I Very do. Very important call happening. No, not an important call. It's our Facebook Live, <laughs> and every we kind of switch off day by day, you and I. And um, the problem is I was going to place it somewhere, but I was having a hard time. Um, I didn't want it. There we go. We're What's cool about there. the Facebook Live is we can, we can read your comments in real time, yeah. and it also gives viewers of the Facebook Live a chance to see behind the scenes of what we see and uh, we have a beautiful view we have uh, Ray who's one of our stage managers and we also have Kat who is one of our producers and you know what Kat as long as you're out here why don't you just come out on come the show on over here girl. Catherine Sorto it is your birthday it's your birthday girlfriend thank y'all happy y birthday <laughs> I love your shirt Thank you, thank you. Listen, Kat <laughs> has been with us now for how many years? Three years? Um, yeah, like three and a half. You were an intern to begin with, correct? I was, I was. I started December 2016, so the show was only like four or five months in. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen it grow, you know, and I love it. And we've seen you grow because you've graduated from college, you have your apartment, mm -hmm. fully furnished. I mean, we're, you're just like growing up right in front of our faces. You guys are so sweet. No, I, we're actually not sweet. You are so sweet. Yeah, no, I know it's crazy. Well, I tell you guys like, like every day because sometimes you talk about stuff that I don't understand or like that are <laughs> maybe like older than Generational. I... Generational. <laughs> Generational. Like, like TV shows from the 90s. She's like, Friends, what was that? Will and Grace? Never heard of it. Rubik's that Cube? Cube. What? <laughs> no, but no, I do learn so much from y'all every single day. Well, both my boys <laughs> love you so much, and Aww. they did want me to tell you happy birthday today. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, and they wanted to know what type of hot item you were going to eat today. What's number one on the list? Cat loves hot. Hot ruffles. Hot ruffles? Hot okay. Ruffles. Those are no joke, by the way. They, I think that's like the hottest in the hot category, right? Yeah, yeah the hot Funyuns are amazing. I, I mean, too. the hot popcorn. Cat claims that there's nothing hot she can't eat, but we did this chocolate challenge, a super hot, was, was it a habanero pepper chocolate? Oh, yeah, the ghost. The called ghost the pepper. Ghost, the ghost pepper, pepper in a fuego box, and that, yeah. was, that was a tough one. Hey, listen, my mom also sends her happy birthday greetings to you, uh -huh. and she was so happy that uh, you surprised us by playing the national anthem last week and forcing us to sing on the show. She's like, I owe that cat. I'm going to send her a note. Do you spell her name with a C or a K? Hey, quickly, because I know typically you're in the control room during our show. Cat's uh, gone from intern to producer to writer to editor to line producer. She does a million things around here. You know that we have a couple open positions here at Houston Life. Mm -hmm. We're expanding our team because we're going to move to the three o'clock hour next month. Right. We're starting to get a lot of applications. So if you had any advice for someone who hopes to work on this team, what would that be? That's a good one. I'd say watch the show. <laughs> know the show. I mean, you would think that's obvious. It's not. It's not. Like, you know, you know, we, we were talking to our executive producer this morning, Katie, and she was saying all these crazy stories about, it's just funny, like, sometimes how people, you know, they want to work in the industry, and it's great. You know, we, you know, we love it. You know, we love our jobs, but you should be familiar probably with where you want to apply. <laughs> That's a good yeah. idea. And also, I think the descriptions, you know, if, if we're looking for someone who can shoot a camera and edit and write and do all of those things, yeah. it's probably good to do all of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, be well-rounded for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any parting wishes you want to say before you go back to work? <laughs> no, but <laughs> She's like, thank you guys. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all are really sweet. Thank y'all for doing We that. do have a picture from our team we want to show. Oh, y'all are the best. Can you read yeah. it? Can you see what it says? Yes. Happy birthday, dear cat in Hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos. Uh, happy birthday to you! Two exclamation points! So cute, and that's our entire team. It is. I love it. It's amazing. And then we're gonna add two more positions, so you know it'll grow. And sweet Erin is the first exclamation point, and she'll be back from maternity leave soon. Yeah. Uh, we love her, and that's great that she was part of this too. Yeah. yeah. Later this week, she'll be back. Happy yeah. birthday, Cat. We Thank love you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Happy birthday! <laughs> oh, now, now they're saying get back now. Okay. She's the best. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things about Cat. Not only does she work so hard, she's typically one of the last people here on the team and there were nights when when the show was just in its infancy right when cat would be here till 10 p.m 11 p.m midnight right 
I mean, working hard and not complaining at all. Sometimes she would leave and she would come back. The day that we did that weird scooter thing. Where yeah, that was her. Cat, like, she has a massive truck. Like, the truck is so big. I don't even know how she fits it into the parking lot here. But she loaded those scooters into the truck and made it happen. She's always willing to jump in and help. Willing to jump in and help. Willing to learn. And also... Um, willing to take a chance and I think that that is what's so great about this show is uh, to, to work on this show is most people you know you think I have this job I'm gonna go from A to B to C sometimes I mean you guys have seen the wheels fall off this bus so you know I mean you've got to be willing to in, in news anyway you've got to be able to pivot oh yeah we don't pivot we make hard <laughs> lefts and rights you know what I mean we drive right off that overpass <laughs> I'm laughing right now because I'm so glad Kat puts up with our teasing. We call her Patricia if we think she's being a little spicy or Diane, depending on the day. And there have been so many times I've jumped out and scared her and we've set up cameras and she still talks to me. She has a great attitude, but she will laugh so hard. I mean, you think we laugh hard here on Houston Life. She gets the giggles. She gets the giggles and she about falls out of her chair. <laughs> so about a month ago, there were these breakfast tacos or like lunch something sitting around in the lobby but because it was during our show time we couldn't actually eat so finally after the show was over we all went out into the lobby she was so excited she was so excited to eat this taco she opened it up and a fly flew out of it uh-uh and she screamed and kind of cried and almost fell out of her chair at <laughs> the same great time great moment oh, oh sad. we could talk about cat stories all day long we'll find some more pictures and videos and share them on our social media feeds but happy, happy birthday, birthday sweetheart she's, she's headed back to the control she's room. so great and speak you know we were talking her point totally is great about if you are going to apply for something watch it be familiar with the company kind of know what's going on i love getting emails in the body of, you know it's emailed to us or the team but the body of the email was clearly cut copied and pasted oh, from another for, for another tv station yeah oh that with happens their all name the time on it and you know or houston live not houston life yeah you know i mean there's all kinds of i'd love to be on your radio program it's so Lots funny. Lots of those. So you know I'm friends with Deborah Duncan, of course. We all are from Great Day Houston uh, on CBS. And we were having dinner together a while back just sort of laughing about like what happens behind the scenes, right? And the number of times we've gotten emails here at Houston Life and people are like, Dear Deborah, yeah. I'd love to be on your show. I love like, you. But it was email My name starts us. with a D, but it's not Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It happens all the time. I think we've gotten some good applications, though, for the show. And again, if you guys know anyone who shoots and writes and edits, it's, and Houston is the fourth largest city in America. So the people we're looking for on this team, you know, they've got to have these skills. And uh, and it's going to be great. So our, our family is growing, and hopefully it's one of you out there. That would be fantastic. It'd be a lot of fun. See what happens. So I know the weather has been a little bit muggy these days. But yesterday afternoon, uh, after the show, I went down to one of my favorite places in the city, Discovery Green. <gasps> Discovery Green. Oh my gosh, we I love, love it. it so much. And look at this. We I actually ended up going home, grabbing Brandon, and we went back together. We grabbed our masks and we just walked through the park. And it's so beautiful there, right by the convention center and the Marriott Hotel, and they have their little, you know, water features and ponds there. This pathway through the trees. So pretty. It's so beautiful. It doesn't I look mean, humid at all. <laughs> you know what? Last night <laughs> no, was not last bad. night actually wasn't. It, it was, was actually so really bad. Nice. Yeah. It was a little bit strange, I will say, to be down there and the Empty. Grove restaurant, yeah. which is closed right now. Mm -hmm. And our plan was actually to sit on the grass and get some takeout maybe from Phoenicia Market, which is down there. If you guys are looking for a great date night, I'm serious. Go downtown to Phoenicia, which is right by the Four Seasons. It's a little market. Grab a sandwich and a blanket and go sit at Discovery Green and just enjoy the, the evening. The outside. Yeah. The next time there's a summer day. And now that all the bike lanes have been so rapidly expanding through downtown and midtown, there is a bike lane that runs, uh, of course, right next to Discovery Green, sure. but in front of that market, Phoenicia. And you can make your way around. And there's an app called Trail Link that uh, we like to use. Yeah. And it can show you where all of these trails are. So last night was just a reminder of 
how much I love this city and being outside, even though it is a little hot and sticky right now. But we're used to it. That's the thing. I mean, yeah. you know, we're used to it, I feel like. So... Is this your better, or am I just getting used to it after four years of living You're here? getting used to it. Really? Is yes. that what's happening? Yes, that's what's happening. You're getting used to it. Huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good sign. It is. And, I mean, this is it. I'd rather deal with the humidity now. As I always say, we don't have to shovel humidity that, you know, in January or February when the rest of the country is, you know, freezing and in a tundra. I know. We're kind of enjoying some fabulous weather. It's so true. Every time I visit my mom in Salt Lake City during the winter, I just think, oh, my gosh, the driveway has two feet of snow in it, and it's so difficult to get around. You're on the roads. It's sliding around. Winter and I say, is Mom, never ending. It doesn't have to be like this. No, it doesn't. I support your lifestyle choice of living in Salt Lake City. However, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can make a change at any time. We need to get her to, let's get my mom and your mom on the Zoom. That would be great. A little combo. That would be awesome. She's, she's like, you know... Living large. She loves it. Never I, looked back. You know what? That's so great. Now I just need to find you a man, Mom. Yeah. Not that you need one. You know, a little companionship. Why? So she can change his diapers? No, no. That's exactly what she <laughs> says, well, by that's the why way. I said it. No, I know, but she, everybody deserves a little companionship. Totally. But That's all I mean. No diaper changing. But it comes in many forms. Companionship could be you and me. It could be best friends. And, you know, yeah. if relationships have not been romantically your thing, I mean, I know so many introverts who would rather be alone than babysitting some old man. Totally. But she is not an introvert. My Your mom. mom is not an introvert. Mm -mm. Hey, speaking of this crazy, sticky, hot weather, so we are... Our AC unit has been Honey, on the fritz. You've had some issues. I've had some issues, right? <laughs> and our house is only like two years old, right? But since the beginning, we've been having these problems. So, you know, we have one hour heating and air conditioning on the show regularly. Sure. Because they do our Tuesday tip. And in fact, we have Jimmy Sanchez on the show. Love him. The general manager a little bit later. So... <laughs> Last week, it was before our morning call, okay? This was like 8.30 in the morning. I texted our executive producer, Katie, and I said, hey, do you have Jimmy's info? Because I would love to just call and set up an appointment, have them come out and do a service and scope out, try to figure out, get to the bottom of like, what, what is, is going happening? on. What's going on? Why is the AC unit sometimes freezing up and sweating and all of that? And so backstory is, too, you've had a hard time getting somebody to respond to your request, uh, BTW. <laughs> I have. Okay. I have. We're going to move. So anyway, so Katie says, no problem. And she sends me Jimmy's contact. You know how you can message someone? Yeah, the share, contact. Your, share your contact. Right. So she messages me the contact, and it's a 310 phone number. 310, I mean, that's one of the L.A. area codes. So I Jimmy's thought, a, that's okay. interesting. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy is from L.A. I didn't realize this. So I call... And the message sounded a little strange. It was almost like it was someone's home answering machine. The okay. kids had left the greeting. Like, hey, we can't come to the phone. Stuff that I used to do when I was a kid, right? right? So, I, so I left this message. Hey, Jimmy, it's Derek Shore <laughs> from Channel 2. <laughs> You know, um, we're looking forward to seeing you on the show next week. But in the meantime, I've been having this uh, constant issue with my air conditioning unit. <laughs> I'm giggling. I can almost imagine where this is going. So uh, anyway, I said just call me. Let me know. Oh, and by the way, it's so funny. You have the same area code, 310, same area code I have for my phone number. Oh, funny, small world. <laughs> anyway, call me when you can. Bye. So I hang up the phone. And up pops this text message from Katie saying, oh, no, don't call that number. That's not the right contact. And she includes Jimmy's contact, Jimmy Sanchez's contact from one hour heating and air conditioning. <laughs> what Jimmy did you call? What? Ji Good question. It was someone from the Jimmy Kimmel show. Someone who works on Jimmy Kimmel. So I called him at 6.45 a.m. L.A. time. Some dude from Channel 2. Hey, Jimmy. My air conditioning is acting up. How's it going? Can't wait to see you on TV. By the way, can you set me up with a service call? What? Did, he, did Jimmy ever call back? No. I love it. Can, we should call him. <laughs> we should call him live on the air. Please stop calling here. Maybe he never listened to the message. But That's I'm pretty amazing. sure it wasn't actually a cell phone. It sounded like a home answering machine. So his poor family, his poor kids, minding their own business on a summer day, 6.45 a.m., and some fool calls from Channel 2. By the way, there is a Channel 2 in L.A., and a lot of people have the 310 area code, so that makes me look even dumber. Because right, I'm like, right. hey, it's me from way. Channel 2. I can't believe we have the same area code. <laughs>
I love it. Oh my <sighs> gosh. I think that's the second time you've done that. Didn't you do that to some guy, like a suit or a shoe guy in LA? Didn't you say? <laughs> oh no, did I? Yes. Oh my there gosh. There's some like shoe guy that you call and you were like, it was a. Okay, we're going to have to regroup on this because I remember you telling me this story. Like a shoe repair guy? Yeah, or like a, an alterations guy <laughs> oh, that you know. called and. I don't know. Okay. You told me the story right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't even remember. You know my short-term memory these days. Mine it's is so really bad. bad. So if I'm remembering it, maybe it wasn't you. <laughs> maybe it was somebody else. It was that other Derek you work with. Oh my gosh, I love that story though. So today we are going to have the real Jimmy Sanchez from One Hour Heating and Air on Not the show. Not area code 310. Not someone who works for the Jimmy Kimmel show. That Although is... maybe they know someone who could also fix my AC unit. That is so great. Okay guys, coming up today we have Challenge Week. It's continuing with our reporter, Lauren Kelly. Every day this week at the top of the show, we're giving Lauren a challenge that she has to complete by the end of the hour. And just to refresh your memory, yesterday was a paint-by-number portrait of Tex, and it is time now to reveal today's challenge. Lauren Kelly is standing by, and Lauren, okay, you've got your summer gear on. Uh, we told you yesterday the hint about today's challenge was that it involves water. Are you ready to hear what it is? I'm dying. The only other hint I got was this morning, our executive producer said, clean your pool. So I'm assuming I'm going to end up in that pool at some part of the day. So let's hear it, guys. Okay. I can only hope it has something to do with synchronized swimming. That's really what I oh, can hope. Oh, maybe you oh. and Gabe could, could swim <laughs> together. That would be fun to watch. Okay, oh, so do you have one of our uh, company vehicles there with you, our Houston Life? I sure do. Okay, Come so. Come on, guys. Let's go to my driveway. Take us to your driveway. Now, in the back of the car. Okay. okay, please ignore that um, accident that happened three years ago that somehow we have still not repaired. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead and open the hatch there. I <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> I know you didn't do it. It happened oh during gosh. our Galveston show. Okay. Those are your materials. Okay, uh, these are large boxes. Okay. Medium and large boxes. You're not moving. Set these down. You are not moving. <laughs> okay, no. We are not I'm asking not you to pack up your house. <laughs> pack up your house and move. <laughs> you are moving. <laughs> uh, okay, there's a lot of boxes. Oh my gosh. Okay, lots of boxes and okay. a plastic baggie. Um, there is a cutting knife. Okay. There are two rolls of duct tape. Oh God. And uh, some waterproof patch and seal tape. Oh, I thought that was salsa. Um, oh, well, salsa best? could be handy in, in this challenge, too. Okay, are you ready? Do you have any idea what you're doing, Lauren? I might, but I would rather you just go ahead and tell me. Okay, here it is. If we could only have a drum roll, if we could bring the drum roll back. I don't think we have one of those. Um, anyway, okay, so today's challenge is with the materials that you just pulled out of the car, is okay. you, you have to make okay. a boat <laughs> that actually floats. Boat? Using only cardboard. It's cardboard, Courtney! And duct tape. I'm just reading the cardboard. words, girl. Uh, you yeah. have to you ha <laughs> it, you have to make a boat that floats. And guess what? You're going to have to well, prove uh, that it floats in the end. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, well, let me get started, you guys. This is going to be challenging because once I get in the boat, it's it's probably going to sink. But uh, we're going to take these these tools right here and uh, I'm going to go get started. Okay. These, uh, well, and it sounds like Lauren, you already know our added twist is that you will have to be able to get in that boat and have okay. it still float with you in it. How how long, Derek and Courtney, how long does it have to float for? Like, you know, like real quick or? I mean, it is it like one 1,000, like two 1,000? I mean, I think a few seconds seems reasonable, but yeah. that's some pretty thick cardboard, so I think it could float for a couple yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right, I have some ideas. Maybe if I can get in and shout Houston Life, that'll be good enough for float time. Okay. How about that? All right, yeah. get to work, girl. <laughs> And I get think it could be a right, raft. Girl, girl. It doesn't necessarily have to be a boat. Anything right. that floats, Lauren. Go for it. We're going to check back in with Lauren in about 15 minutes and remind her that she will be live the entire hour on Facebook. So follow along and see how she's doing. Oh, yeah. And sorry about my Facebook Live, y'all. I don't know. There's no internet connection here, so it got cut off. Oh, you're not live on Facebook no, anymore. No, it got cut off. There's no internet connection. We don't have internet in the building. No, We're it's dial-up. It's, it's dial a whole up. thing. Mm -hmm. um, after the break, though, Cam Franklin, the lead singer of The Suffer, she's joining us live and going to perform the group's new single after the break.
Welcome back. After a challenging year, Houston-based band The Suffers is back in the spotlight with brand new music. Well, the group is known for its soulful music and high-energy performances commanded by lead singer Cam Franklin, who is joining us now. Hi, Cam. It's great to see you. Hi. I'm happy to be here. Good to see you all as well. You look great, girl. And let's talk about um, what life has been like. I know this last year has been super tough for you guys. And of course, then you add in COVID, not touring, but uh, bring everybody up to speed. Uh, yeah, when you when you add in COVID and not touring, uh, we lost two of our founding members last year. Uh, they decided to spend more time at home and focus more on themselves. And we replaced our bass player with a new member named Juliet Terrell. And we're so grateful to have her. Um, but, you know, through everything we went through, including having $40,000 worth of gear stolen last year, we persevered because that's what we do. And now we're back with new music and uh, hopefully just an overall new vibe that uplifts people. I know things are very strange right now in the world between everything that's happening, um, this uh, racial revolution that we're going through. But the thing is, is that uh, however you're getting through this, however your form of protest, you have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And I hope that uh, we can help assist with that by just spreading positive messages of love and joy and uh, survival. And Cam, obviously we know you're an optimist. We love watching you perform. I can't wait to see you on stage live <laughs> performing again, hopefully in the not too distant future. But talk to us just about your artistic process because they always say what doesn't kill you make, makes you stronger, right? And when you were performing out there on stage, doesn't the hard times, I mean, don't the hard times sort of make you not only appreciate the good times, but does it make your work better? I would definitely say that uh, I have grown to really appreciate every challenge, every milestone, uh, everything that we have to push through because uh, it's almost as if all of those lessons come back later on. And every time it's time for us to combat it that second time, you know, I feel prepared. I feel equipped because of what we've gone through together. You know, the Suffers turned nine years this year. Wow. And as an independent band with so many members in it, with so many different uh, personalities, you know, you don't really see that anywhere. You don't see that camaraderie. You don't see that love. You don't see that uh, level of diversity coming from a group where we're in this together you know when you see the folks on stage you know it's the same faces from the beginning for the most part and we share this experience together and that allows us to keep going together um we're we're, we're so grateful for the fact that we're still here because we know that there are so many bands that have tried and failed we know that uh COVID is going to have a, an extreme effect on on artists and their artistry um, in different ways. For me, it's actually allowed me to thrive uh, as far as getting these creative ideas out that I necessarily wouldn't have been able to get out uh, in a timely way because of being on the road. Um, this environment that I'm in behind me is uh, the second installment of an art installation that I've built called the Sequin Sanctuary. Um, this is actually my bedroom, but I've transformed it into a music venue because I've come to terms with the fact that I'm not going on tour anytime soon. I'm not going to perform in a music venue in the way that I want to for members of the general public uh, for a long time because, you know, COVID is out there and people uh, aren't safe. And I want to make sure that we aren't contributing to that um, where we can. And so I've created this alternate universe in my own uh, space to allow me to continue performing online. We just wrapped up 15 weeks of live stream shows for free on Facebook and Instagram to keep folks uplifted. Uh, but we're about to go uh, into a paid platform here in the next few weeks. And we're planning to launch a Patreon page that will allow folks to not only see 
new versions of our live stream performances, but have access to music, unreleased music. We're wrapping up our third record this week from afar. So this is gonna be a, a different <laughs> process for us because we're so used to recording together. Right. But well, um, and honestly, we're Karen, it, it's the new normal, right? And I'm so glad it that is. you were able to provide that platform, that free platform for us during quarantine. But at the end of the day, y'all need to make a living mm -hmm. and we need to support that because we love the sufferers. We love the eight piece Houston based soul and funk and R&B sound. And now we've got the new single. We do have the new single, so uh, we're going to take a moment to listen to it. Cam Franklin with a brand new Suffers track, Take Me to the Good Times. Here it is. Thanks. I just gotta get out more space, you see. I like walking around, it's good for me. Could you tell me where we could go? He took me to the good times. I just gotta get out more space, you see. I like walking around, it's good for me. Could you tell me where we could go? He took me to the good times. <laughs> Summer's in Brooklyn.
I mean, I want to be your neighbor. Okay? I want to borrow that outfit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you call it the glitter room? The, is that the room? Oh, man. So that installment of the room was called the Sequin Sanctuary. Love it. Uh, <laughs> and I love I'm in the process of rebuilding it. This is just the beginning of it what it's It looks amazing. And the assortment Thank of the you. boots in the background, because you don't have to just play country music to appreciate the boots, y'all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Boots are a part of Texan culture, all Texan culture. Cam, that was really great to see that Thank and experience you. that just now because it really is, I don't know, incredible to see how we, we just got a full on concert just right. now. You have evolved and you have made this work and that set up there you've created at home. It's working. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know it's tough for all the creatives out here to figure it out, but you know, we got to just push through and figure it out. So, and you're going to be doing the paid platform live, live streaming, and that's going to start when, Kim? Uh, here in the next two weeks, we're going to switch over to Patreon and we'll have a formal launch. But if folks want to keep up with us, we just encourage them to go to thesuppers.com and just follow us on everything. It's fantastic. It's feel good music. I love Take Me to the Good Times, an appropriate message right now. We appreciate you and can't wait to see you in person uh, and stay healthy. Thank you. And thank y'all for everything you're doing. Y'all encourage us here at home. And I just love the constant showcasing of Houston everything. Oh, that is so sweet. I was serious about borrowing that outfit, by the way, Cam. So I'll call you later. We'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll get you a copy. That shirt's by to uh, Toby Nwigwe, but we'll we'll figure out the rest of it. For okay, you. perfect. <laughs> I love it. And by the way, guys, to connect with the sufferers, visit our website and click on the scene on Houston Life section. And we will be right back. Everybody, welcome back from commercial break. You know what? On our social um, comments today, you guys are being very helpful to Lauren Kelly. I love this because um, they're giving advice on what she should be doing and if to I could it read it. Right. So Paige writes in that says, line outside with duct tape and that should waterproof it. Ooh, that is a good, that's a good idea. I wonder if there's enough tape for that. Uh, Marie says you need oh. to make it like a canoe. Okay. okay. Marie, do you have experience with this? How do people know this? It's I don't impressive. know. And go with only half of the cardboard. Oh. I would still be staring at all the supplies. I'm going to be honest with you. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Wait, and how many how many boxes does she have? She had a collection, right? I think she had three. So couldn't she just, what if she left them all flat and she used the duct tape to sort of wrap around it? So then she would have sort of like a, a floating mat. Because that cardboard yeah. is buoyant. It has air in it, right? Right. Does she have to use all the equipment? Oh, I don't know. Then you just put the cardboard in the water and just float. Maybe Gabe has some ideas because technically never we, we never said that she couldn't have help, right? And Gabe, if he's home, I'm not sure if he's working today, but if he's home, perhaps he's, oh. Oh, well, that's help. Well, he's home. Shirts have nothing to do with this assignment. Okay, that's actually not helpful because if I were there, I wouldn't be able to focus. Well, you're not. You're just looking at him on the monitor. And I still can't focus. <laughs> After the break, we're going to check back in with Lauren Kelly, who is hard at work. <laughs> She is. And check in on that challenge. If I could actually get the words out. Am I supposed to be reading something on? <laughs> if they're not done by the end of the show, I'd be happy to go over and help as well. Lauren's oh clearly gosh. working on that boat. Let's see if it floats. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back. Before the break, we checked in with Lauren Kelly, who is working along with her boyfriend on today's challenge, which is to make a boat that floats using only cardboard and tape. Okay, well, let's check in and see how she's doing so far. Busy at work. How's it going, Lauren? Okay, you guys, so far, so good. Courtney, I know you mentioned it, Derek. We've gotten so many great comments from our viewers. By the way, some of them we know are engineers. So oh. thank you for the help of telling <laughs> us, you know, which boxes will float, which way we should fold them, and how much duct tape we should use. So we've taken their advice, and we have actually put duct tape nice. on the entire thing. Cool. We did not use all the boxes. We used almost all of them. But you have to keep in mind, I still have to get on top of it. So this probably will float by itself self in the water um, but when you're adding you know like 85 pounds 
adding my weight on top of it. <laughs> you know, you have to take an account for how much more has to sit on top of it. So um, we're trying to keep that as light as we can, but we're trying to make it as sturdy as we can. And so what we're going to finally add at the very end, which we've done so much work, this black tape is waterproof tape. So that hopefully, it's not going to give us any buoyancy, but it's going to kind of keep the water from rushing in okay. boxes instead of like seeping in and making them just soggy. So wish us luck. Okay. Well, it looks like you've got a good handle on it. Again, if that were me, I'd still be staring at everything, all the supplies that I took out of the car. Uh, we're going to check Where's back in with you in about 15 minutes. And a reminder, she will be live the entire hour on Facebook, so you can follow along there. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if um, she took that float to her next pool party and was yeah. like, guys, I'm hey. ready. Like, what is up? Pool floaties. <laughs> all right. We are in for another hot and sticky week here in the Houston area. After the break, why not stay cool with a brand new, reliable AC system? We've got details on how you can save more than a thousand bucks. That's next. Welcome back. It's time now for our Tip Tuesday with one hour air conditioning and heating of Houston. The summer heat can, of course, really take a toll on your AC system, especially as we've all been spending more time at home these days, Courtney. Absolutely. If you have an older AC system that needs to be replaced, contact the pros at one hour air conditioning and heating. They've been serving the Houston area for more than 50 years, and they offer free in-home estimates to determine the system that works best for your home and budget. Very important right there and right now they do have a special discount on brand new systems take seventeen hundred seventy six dollars off a deluxe or better complete AC and heating system not bad seventeen seventy six I think that has something to do with the fourth of July right there joining us now with more is Jimmy Sanchez general manager of one hour air conditioning and heating of Houston Jimmy it is great to see you thanks so much for joining us today well, Derek, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we always love having you and these tips. Listen, I've been one of those people lately. Every time we turn on the AC, I just think, okay, gosh, like, don't Please sweat. Work. Don't leak. Please work. <laughs> and just sort of walk us through, how do you know if maybe your AC unit, it's time to replace it or if you can just, you know, get by with some repairs? Well, that's a great question. You know, here in Houston, our air conditionings really take a beating. Uh, with the heat and humidity that really makes them work over time. So there's many factors, but I, let me just cover three that are probably uh, make it easier to, to understand. Uh, first is the condition of your current system, right? Are you experience, experiencing frequent breakdowns, right? Or even just the cost of today's repairs, you know, those things start to add up over time. And if you have an aging system, right, we have to start thinking about, is it is it worth it to continue to invest money into this current system? or maybe consider uh, uh, going into a newer system that's gonna give you that peace of mind in your home, right? Uh, the other thing that we see is uh, sometimes customers like to piece systems together where you have a, a new coil or a new condenser and uh, maybe an older furnace. And what this does is it doesn't give you the efficiency that some of the customers are looking for, right? And then when I talked about the efficiency and one of those factors to consider, it's kind of like miles per gallon on your car when you buy a brand new car when it first comes out you know you're getting all these miles to the gallon but over time you know it becomes less and less so there's just a couple that we can talk about uh, as we look at uh, what's what to consider when replacing that system and and i think that's right jimmy once we're in the mindset of okay we need a new system. Okay, we're dealing with that. We know this is gonna be a purchase that we're gonna to have to make. How do we figure out what system to buy? Because clearly it's not one system for every house. Every home in Houston is completely different. You know, we talked about that efficiency a second ago. Uh, you know, the size of your home, which way it's facing, the insulation in your home, all these factors determine what type, what size of AC that we wanna go ahead and put in a home. Uh, and again, you know, one of the other things, especially with today's, is the green factor, right? We have R22, which is being uh, phased out. So that uh, refrigerant is only going to continue to get more and more expensive. So just another factor to consider when you're thinking about, you know, is it time to replace? Now, as to what type of system, again, I think the best thing that we can do as customers or consumers is to get a, a professional company to come out and do an analysis of the home to determine exactly what size the home, uh, what size the AC uh, for that home is needed. Uh, they'll take all those things into consideration, like the insulation in the walls, like I talked about a second ago, where, where all the windows are placed, 
and we want to make sure that we are getting the right size according to that uh, engineering and anal analysis that we do to determine the size of the equipment. And let's just talk about the cost of some of these new systems, because, Jimmy, for a lot of homeowners, this is a tough pill to swallow. It's like, oh, my gosh, this new system is something you want to be sure that you get right, of course, because it is an investment. You want it to last for a long time. But you guys have some really great specials right now. Absolutely, Derek. So, you know, nobody wakes up today thinking, uh, you know, we're going to do this sizable investment. It's definitely a tough decision. Um, this is definitely a need, not a want. Um, in, in in terms of what price it's going to cost, the good thing is you as a consumer get to decide what price that's going to be because you get to build the system. We go over all the, the specifications of your home. We have everything from a basic all the way up to a system that has all the bells and whistles that's going to control all that humidity and, and uh, co comfort in your home. So you as a consumer will show you everything that's available to you for your home. Uh, we'll make sure we take everything into consideration, like I talked about earlier, those other factors that can, that affect the comfort in your home. We'll lay all those out in front of you and we'll let you and, and guide you as we go through designing that system with you. So in the end, you're the one that decides how much that cost is going to be. The good thing is uh, there's many financing options out there to help because nobody, especially during these unprecedented times, nobody woke up today wanting to invest uh, you know, that, that sizable amount. So. In the end, the consumer decides exactly how much they want to spend in that home. And right now, you have a special 4th of July offer that's being extended. And let's talk about that, Jimmy. Absolutely. So, you know, we're, uh, here we have many veterans like myself that continue to serve, and we're looking for ways to really promote that uh, uh, to all our Houstonians. So uh, coming up with the 1776 uh, offer and special recognition of uh, July 4th was just one more way we can give back to the customers here in Houston. Um, so we've extended it uh, for another full week. So we'll, we'll continue to go ahead and offer that to all our customers that uh, call it. You can do that by calling 855-1HOUR or visiting onehourhouston.com. Okay, one hour air conditioning and heating. Jimmy Sanchez, thank you so much. 50 years in business and counting a staff of more than 100. We appreciate your time and helping us stay cool this summer. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Jimmy. You too. And if you'd like to learn more, you can visit onehourhoustonac.com. Again, that number is 855-1HOUR. And don't forget that special runs through July 10th. All right. After the break, uh, why don't we head back out to Lauren Kelly's backyard to see how she's been doing with today's challenge. Remember, <laughs> she's been working on creating something that floats out of only tape and cardboard with extra help from Gabe right there. We'll check in next. She's been working hard with her boyfriend, Gabe. Lauren Kelly has been tasked with building a boat using only cardboard and duct tape. And the twist is that she's going to have to get in it in her pool. And we're nearing just the end of the show now. So we're just checking in with you, Lauren, now. Um, how's it going? How confident are you? What do you think? Okay, well, this is our finished product. We duct taped about three boxes together. We put all the duct tape all over every single side. There is no box showing. And the black tape on the very end is waterproof tape. So we're hoping that anything that we missed, uh, no water is gonna get in that. Now the trick is obviously, did we make it too heavy? Gabriel, I don't know if, if we got on top of it, if if it's gonna float or if it's going to sink, but that was the strategy that we used. Um, we didn't wanna put all the boxes because we thought at first like maybe put all of it, um, but that would be too heavy. So uh, this, is, this is what we came up with and the, the viewers were really, really great about telling us how much tape and which we should use to cover. We used almost all two rolls of duct tape. We used all of the waterproof tape and I think that it's looking pretty good. Like as me picking it up, it doesn't feel too heavy. Okay. I think I've been on a float that has been about this heavy All right. water. So Okay, um, Lauren. <sighs> All right, I know. I, I think you did a great job, but we're going to take a break and we're going to check back in with you, get the full test, right? I would say it looks okay. nice and solid, and yeah. I don't just mean Gabriel's abs, I mean the, the float you built. So we'll let you get your gear, <laughs> your electronic me. gear off, <laughs> and after the break, we'll see if it floats, huh? Absolutely. Finger 
up on the big show tomorrow. If you decided to embark on a road trip this summer, you are certainly not alone. It's a strong appeal for many. We're going to share five hot spots where you'll get the most bang for your buck, plus safety travel tips you must know about to stay healthy and safe. Yeah, road trips are always yeah. a good time. Also, Challenge Week continues with Lauren Kelly. Oh my gosh, she does not know what is coming up, and neither do we. No. But we do have a hint. Tomorrow's challenge involves eggs. Okay. Hopefully not rotten ones. Hopefully, I know, maybe an egg toss, I don't know. Okay, Lauren, it's your time, turn now. I know you don't have an earpiece in your mic. You're getting ready to put your boat to the test. So we are in, you've taken, it's been about 50 minutes, almost an hour yeah. for you to build your boat. All right, let's do it. Get in, girl. Okay. Okay, so it's floating, it's floating on its, it's floating. own. That's good news. Oh, and she's decided to go on her stomach. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> it worked, she says. It's almost, it's almost like a, uh, a boogie board. Yeah. Well done. Lauren's boogie board. It totally, it oh, totally worked. Oh, I don't know. I sort of, oh, well, it's oh, going no. down. Oh, oh. It's going down. <laughs> but it's floating. See, she just had a she had a swimming mishap. When I envisioned this challenge too, I don't know. I was envisioning her not actually getting wet though, like being able to get into something that didn't get wet. I know, but she's just good sport. She, she likes, is a yeah. good sport. One of our viewers had suggested sort of a canoe shape, and uh, yeah. Oh God, it's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, now that it's taken on water, right? Great job, Lauren. We're proud of you, girl. I'd still be staring at all the materials. What materials? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great job. Lauren, great job. We'll see you tomorrow. Get those eggs ready. I know, good thing she can't hear. Um, okay, she well, she did it. She is a good sport and she's having fun in the pool. She's <laughs> using it like a paddle board now. It's a great day to have a pool, huh? It is. We got to get a pool. Yeah, you do. <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye bye.